Morning, y'all. It's a cold start. We've got ice. I'm heading to America. You coming with me? Right, today's vlog is gonna answer, I got a few questions over the weekend, I think it was because of my golf is a struggle video, where people are asking for plans of how to improve their handicap, so how can they get their handicap from 14 to 19 to this year, what should they do? So I'm gonna give you an idea of what I would do if I was trying to lower a handicap, improve my ability, maybe even try and compete again, the kind of ideas I would work towards and see what you can get from that. While at the same time today, I'm gonna be going somewhere much more warmer hopefully. First ideas for improving your handicap, your golf, is you'll be amazed how many students come and have come to me for lessons and they don't really know what their bad shot is. They don't really know what's letting them down. Like they say often it's the driver and then you measure the driver and it does, you can see that it lets them down but I would always measure like a medium iron and a driver and then if the session is long enough we'll measure longer clubs and short clubs too and their dispersion with their iron even though left and right is not far off say where mine would be it's okay but short and long you see massive holes so you can see they're not really identifying that as a problem certainly if they're heavy practicers like range goers where the left and rights they're monitoring short and long often harder to do on a range just because you can't walk up there and pick them up and get a real visual of how many would have missed the green way short or way long. So getting something like a tracking system, you know, your Arcos game goals, there's apps, all those kind of things really are fantastic tools. I mean, we do it in the videos. I just have to watch the videos back and I can see the patterns of shots and when I'm editing, it's quite interesting as you watch them back. And what I remember as a, as a a competing golfer when I was younger, I mean, I could walk you round rounds now, probably still some of my bigger rounds, so as in good rounds and awful rounds, but in big events. And that kind of analysis, constant analysis, and looking back and rethinking of how I could have proved, could have two putted there, should have up down there, you know, it's such a shame I blocked that free wood there, so on and so forth. All those kind of things would lead to my next practice regime. So the first thing is really trying to understand what's letting you down and doing that with a coach is great. Your gap testing, things like that can really let you see where gaps are in the game. Because you'll start seeing the patterns of shapes as you go through the bag and often how many shots it takes for you to hit a decent amount to get a trackable number for distance. So like sometimes you do gap test and you get a six side and they've got to hit about 20 shots before you get an average reading which is anywhere near realistic because they hit so many misses. So that self-diagnosis, that, that kind of self-analysis is much more important than amateurs often give credit for because at the end of the day, and I understand it, they're out there for fun. So they're just reflecting on the fun they had um, rather than really reflecting on how it, how it actually went. And we have some interesting conversations with Rory sometimes, who is a very knowledgeable guy, he like gets golf, but we play with him in some places and he says some things and afterwards, and me and Matt are like thinking, cool, we don't, we've not seen that like that. Like he thinks he's done quite good today where we say probably not and vice versa as well. So that kind of self-diagnosis is a key for you getting better. It's got to be the starting point. Two bags got. Come on, oversize. I want to get out of this airport now. Right, few points of interest. One, it's raining. Yes, raining. And two, this seems to be my car. Right, my next point, as I try and work this sat nav, is once you've identified the issues, so once you've identified what your problems are, you need to work hard on fixing them. And that sounds really obvious, but some people shy away from practicing things they're not good at which is not gonna help you. You need to really focus on those things. And then the other thing, which I kind of touched on in my chipping video, if anyone saw the video where I, uh, I'm talking about trying to improve my chipping, is you've got to get creative. You've got to find out why that part's letting you down, which is part of the lesson. But So if I practice my chipping with no pressure, it's relatively reasonable as soon as I feel that slight edge of the camera on, knowing you're watching and I want to win a match, then it becomes harder. So it's making sure you're practicing and practicing the right way so that if it's a certain hole that you struggle with, where it's always cutting off to the right on that certain hole. You know, golf is crazy enough where that 
does happen sometimes. Then you need to think about maybe practicing a different shape shot for that hole, hitting a different club, a, like a harder three wood or a soft driver or a really hard hybrid or something to try and buck that trend. You've got to try and get creative with your practice. Just going to the range and doing the work to fix the swing issue, stroke what you're finding from your analytics that's causing you to drop shots, might not always be enough. For some it is, and for many it's not, because it's such a false environment. It's about being creative, getting on the course maybe more than going to the range. When you do get on the course, trying to make sure there's an edge to it, so you feel nervous maybe, or maybe just banging loads of balls on the range, that's your solution, but the trick is finding your one that works for you. Slightly tired, raining and dark. This could be interesting. Let's go. Made it. That was a long day. Kind of crossed through two different days, isn't it? Problem I've got now is I'm hungry. And I guess we're calling this food. It's eight o'clock in the morning my time, but it's midnight the place where I am time so uh, I don't know what to do so I thought I'd finish this video last thing you need to think about is how much work it will take to change to make yourself better to put that work in for most golfers it takes a lot of effort often more effort than they've got so their aspirations far outweigh the reality of what they can do and I see that a lot and it leads to real upset even people giving up you know people want to achieve golf's a very difficult game it needs a lot of time it needs a lot of effort often needs a lot of money as well and unless your life situation is in the perfect spot that's always going to be hard to really achieve it shouldn't stop any of you doing it i just would like you to be very realistic with what you think you can achieve and then in turn, how sustainable that is. I mean, the classic example, I think it's interesting. You take young males, so part I was a part of, I saw so many starting as juniors. They get to that kind of college years and university years, and then they just drift off. I carried on playing golf. So lots of my friends kind of just drifted away. And then they don't kind of come back until they're about kind of 30, 35, married with kids, and then want to look for a sport again, can't play football anymore, those kind of things. You can play to a certain standard, and then obviously if you don't commit that same amount of time, your standard will dip. Very similar to what you see in the vlogs. Now, I don't play to the standard I used to play at when I was competing. You know, I, I, that's why I can't, I don't really think about competing anymore because I would just need to put so much effort in because I'm competitive. I wouldn't want to go and embarrass myself in an event uh, you know that that's just pointless uh, uh, if i'm gonna do it i want to do it properly and i'm someone who's very much not kidding myself i've played to a standard i was in kind of proud of and to get back to there i know the work it will take and i'd rather spend the time with my family i love making the videos and i love playing around the world with mates that's my objective now rather than just getting better i do want my chip in to get better though so understanding how much work it takes how much effort is really key so you don't get disillusioned when it is a struggle and when it is hard because that's what makes you better it is that it's that struggling golf nothing's easy you have to kind of have plenty of fails to then have that su that success. Even the best players in the world, their fail rate outweighs their success rate if it comes to winnings. Right, I'm gonna eat or I'm gonna go to bed. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do, but I'll see you all tomorrow. Week with tight list, hopefully gonna get some interesting insight into what um, my club partner are about. I've not been here to see them before. I've seen the facility on in videos and things like that that they've put out. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're all about. See you all tomorrow.